As AI shakes industries to their core, you may be wondering, can I use AI to design my logos? Perhaps you struggle to generate new ideas or concepts, or you aren't a graphic designer by trade and you just need a quick logo for one of your personal projects. In today's tutorial, we will be exploring a game-changing method that you can implement immediately to get incredible logos like this within minutes. The best part is you don't need any prior design experience because I'm gonna show you how to do it exactly step-by-step step along the way. My name is Eddie and let's get started. The tools I'll be using today are Midjourney and Adobe Illustrator. Midjourney is $10 a month, Adobe Illustrator is $20.99 a month. If this isn't within your budget, I would recommend finding a free AI image generator you can use. It does not have to be Midjourney. I would recommend checking out Stable Diffusion if you're looking for something like this. A free alternative to Adobe Illustrator would be Inkscape. I will put the link to both of those mentioned products in the description below. Uh, they're free so it's not an affiliate commission or anything like that. Now, this is not a tutorial on how to use Midjourney. So there's an assumption that you already have Midjourney installed through Discord or you know how to do so. All right, over here in Discord, I am now messaging Midjourney bot. And down here in this field here is where you would do slash imagine. And next to prompt is where you would put the prompt to generate your logo. We're gonna be doing the lion style esports logo that you saw at the start of the intro here. Uh, so the first thing I did was I told it I wanted a tribal lion sports mascot logo because I wanted the lion to have a little bit more of like a tribal uh, theme to it, sort of like a Native American. And then I also put vector art. So it's more in like a vector art style and simple because you don't want logos to be over complicated with a ton of lines. The first iteration here didn't really give me what I was looking for, although there were some cool uh, results. And you can certainly do things with these, but I thought they were a little too noisy and chaotic and I wanted it to be cleaner. So I ran through another prompt that was slash imagine and then I put in tribal lion sports mascot logo vector art and I put simple lines in four colors. Four colors because I wanna limit this logo to as few colors as possible. And we started getting some better results, I guess, kind of. These are a little more funky though. Really wasn't looking for something like this. This is a little more, uh, I guess this is a little more abstract, but interesting nonetheless. I wasn't getting good results by just putting in descriptions. If you have that issue, you can do something similar to what I did. And I found this logo that was made by, uh, it says social branding, as you could tell by the watermark. And obviously the ethics here are questionable. Like I wouldn't do this method for um, a paid logo for somebody, um, but I needed a lion to use for this example. So I found this uh, lion logo. And what I did is instead of slash imagine, you do slash describe. And then you click this button here and you're able to um, upload a logo you want to use as a reference image. And then what it'll do is it'll give you four different prompts that will um, that are supposed to give you similar results. I turned down the cursor. I just realized the cursor was off. That would be a little confusing. Um, so yeah, down here is imagine all. You click that and it generates all four prompts, right? And you can do this and, and make iterations like this button down here allows you to regenerate um, and you can do that on each one individually too. So I'm looking through these and these are much closer to what I'm looking for, um, but I kind of want it to be symmetrical, which I could put a description in one of these prompts to say symmetrical, but there are some results I like already. So particularly this top right one here, it goes one, two, three, four. So if you want to upscale the top right, you do like U2, which I already did. That's how I got this. Um, I encourage you to play around until you find a result you like. But once you do, you just simply need to copy this image. And this is the part where we're going to go into Adobe Illustrator. This is what it looks like in the end. I'll talk about that in a second. Go into Adobe Illustrator, or if you're using Inkscape or a similar program, you would um, open that at this point. So I'm going to actually just make a second artboard. Uh, the one on the left is just to see what it looked like in the end for you guys. Uh, but I'm going to paste in the image right here and I don't need to scale it yet or anything. I want to keep it exactly 100%. At this point up here, you should see image trace. If you do not see image trace, go to window image trace. Once you click that, it'll turn it into a vector. Um, don't click expand yet. What you need to do is open this 
little uh, more options button. AI, uh, by AI, I mean Adobe Illustrator in this case, is good at detecting the best uh, preset possible and logo should pop up. You can play around with these and see if there's ones you like more. But what I wanna do is there's 30 colors. That's way too much. I think I'm gonna bring it down to eight. You'll see that it's going to lose some of the color, but it's going to be way cleaner. This is fine. Um, I know that currently the, the edge, the outline gets lost because it blends in with the background, but that's OK. That's actually something we're intentionally doing. And you'll see in a moment why you can go through in the advanced settings and play with the paths and whatnot. So what this does is adjusts how the paths are formed, how much detail there is. If you add more paths, it gets a little jankier if you have less paths, it gets like smoother, but you lose some of the finer details. Every logo is going to need different settings. So I encourage you to play with this until you find what works for your logo. You can turn on simplify, which will clean paths automatically a bit, but it might be at the expense of detail. In this case, I actually like the simplify option. So we're going to keep it. You do want logos to be as clean as possible with as few points as possible. OK, so once you have a result you like, before I hit expand, I'm actually going to get rid of a color here. I'm going to do ignore color and I'm going to pick the background color and then I'm going to hit expand. If you are using Inkscape instead of Adobe Illustrator, the tool you'll want to use instead of image trace is actually called trace bitmap. If you need specific help with that, I would just look on YouTube for uh, more specific instructions on that tool, but it should be pretty simple and comparable to the image trace tool here. And then you can close the image trace. So right now you have a full vector, of everything except for the dark blue. I already have the dark blue picked. You could have done a color picker to save that color beforehand. I'm just putting that here on the side for a moment. Um, so what I'm going to do is actually make a duplicate of this layer. And all I'm doing is clicking it, holding alt, dragging it. And then take the original uh, layer and you want the Pathfinder tool, which if that's not open, you can go to Window Pathfinder is Shift Control F9 on Windows. And I'm going to use the first option, which is Unite. And it's going to turn it all into one color. OK, and then I'm going to make it the color of the blue. OK, so now we're going to go to Object Path Offset Path. And mine's in inches, your might, yours might be in pixels, but turn on preview and you'll be able to see it change as you put in new values. I'm gonna move this up to 0.3. And at this point, it takes up most of the fill and adds a good stroke around the edge. I'm gonna change to milter to round and hit okay. Now make sure you have it all selected again and once again, unite. At this point, you can either go in and delete the paths of the empty spaces, or you can simply add rectangles over them. I'm doing here, select them all again, and then once again, unite. And now uh, grab the original layer and bring it back in, but you have to move it to the top, which is control shift right bracket, <laughs> right bracket. I'm sorry. We can actually select both and use the align tools to horizontally and vertically align at center. Now you already have what looks like a complete logo. So we made a lot of progress already. Um, at this point, what I like to do is first go through and make sure there's nothing weird going on, which when you do this method, there is going to be odd cuts and shapes in the finer points like right here, right? Because we're just tracing an AI image. This isn't a perfectly crafted pen tool logo or made with shapes in Illustrator or anything like that. But I do want to at least get rid of these like floating points. So I'm going to use the direct select tool, which is just A on your keyboard. It's also this white triangle up here. Click on loose points and backspace until it's all gone. And then I'm just going to keep looking around for these things and see what we can find. Right here's a weird thing going on, right? This is still all one shape, but the paths cross. I don't like that. So I'm going to actually adjust this a bit. Do that. <laughs> and what you have still is an unnecessary point. So you do something like this if you really wanted to. Now what you're going to do is click the top layer, which is all of the details. But object, 
path. Clean up, see if there's anything that needs to be cleaned up. Make sure all three are selected, straight points, unpainted objects, and empty text paths. No cleanup was necessary. Okay, that's good. Um, what I don't like is that the left side of the image and the right side of the image are slightly different. So you can attribute this to lighting, and that's fine. Maybe that's what you're going for, uh, for different shading and whatnot. But I think the details in the left look better than the ones on the right. Uh, the right just... It, I don't want this darker part of his mane. I don't want the glare on his ear. And um, I would like the faces to be more consistent. So we're actually going to take that top layer, move it back off the artboard. If you don't have a ruler on your left and top, hit Control R. Might be Command R on a Mac. So that way it's out. And what you need to do is zoom in on some sort of center point, which I'm probably going to use this, and drag the ruler out until it locks onto an anchor point, okay? But then the chin, you can see the chin here isn't aligned. I think the chin's more important to have aligned, so I'm going to actually move it over and align it to the chin. Um, everything should be symmetrical except for the hair, right? Like the hair kind of has its own style going at the top. So I do want the top to stay its own thing. Um, so what we're going to do is select the whole object. We're going to divide it in half. Make sure that the ruler, the guide you created, and the um, base the details here are selected. And then under Pathfinder, hit Divide. This divided the whole object in half. Now we need to select everything except for um, this hair section. This part can get selected because these are the same. But we want this section here to be unique. So um, we're going to select the whole right side with the direct select. And then while holding shift, we're going to unselect some of it. Um, and you have to make sure that these points, it's, it's hard, OK? I'm actually going to just do right here, not the whole thing. I'm going to go right side up to about right here. So it's not touching any of the object. And delete. I have to press it a few times to get rid of everything. Then I'm also going to get rid of this object. We have this. We need to ungroup it so that way we can keep the top separate. <laughs> and all I did was I had it all selected. I right clicked and went to ungroup. Select the left side and make sure these are selected too. Oops. Okay. You got everything there. Now I'm going to hold Alt, drag it while holding Shift to make a copy. Right click, transform, reflect vertically. We're going to reflect it vertically. Hit OK. And bring it over until it overlaps. I'm going to select the whole face. And with Pathfinder open, which if you don't have it again, you could go to Window, Pathfinder, which is Shift Control F9 on Windows. You're going to select merge so if there's any paths touching each other that are the same color hitting merge will make them into one all right there we go we have um lion face ready to go bring him back to the center of your artboard make sure everything is centered by selecting everything and if you don't see this alignment tool it's window align which is shift f7 on windows to hit center both vertically and horizontally now we're almost there um, I think there's a few spots that could be cleaned up. Like this should probably be the color of the yellow. All right, so you can tell I'm just cleaning it up. It helps to have some experience with whatever software you're using. And then at this point, you can start customizing it a bit. Like on the original, I turned the eyeballs red. So all I'm doing is going into each individual uh, color within the eyeball and moving it to the red hue. I can do it with the midtones here, move it to the red, and then the shadows can be moved to the red as well. And even these highlights in the eye, just ever so subtle red hue. We're pretty much there. I mean, at this point, you know, it's fine tuning it, making it as presentable as you wish for it to be. This is not a method I'd be using for a paid client 
but you know, for your own personal projects, this is certainly a way you can do logos right now. Um, I think the last thing I'm going to do is highlight this whole thing and uh, move it over, make a duplicate to the side. I'm going to get rid of the top here. And with this backdrop selected, I'm going to go to Object, Path, Offset, Path. I'm going to do about 0.15, which is half of what the other stroke is. Grab the whole thing, unite it, and then change that color to white. Okay. And then bring this back over, select all of the layers and center them again. Now what you have, you can do Control G or Command G to group them. The logo with a white stroke. I like having the separation um, where the background and the outer stroke are their own layers for a few reasons. One, if you do any uh, simplification of like the shapes in here, if you were to move like one of these points like this, there would be white right here because there would be no background behind it. So, but as you zoom in, you can see a lot of areas that need to be fixed, right? Like this is not. That's not acceptable in um, like a, a professional logo. You should be cleaning those type of points up. There really only needs to be a point up here and all the way down here, you know? So these, those are things to consider. Um, that's not the point of the tutorial here. It's to show you how to quick and affordable way make your own logos. Again, I would not encourage you to do uh, paid logos this way. Uh, the legality of this could constantly be changing. That's something I would consider too if you were to be doing paid work like this. Now, the other thing I would do, and if you if you were really going to be making this as nice as possible, I, I really think the best thing you can do is use this as a guide. You can either use the pen tool to trace it, which will give you much cleaner lines, right? Or just use it as a reference as inspiration for an actual logo you're going to use. Maybe do some sketching over it with a stylus and then go through and actually make it into a logo. And that would be a presentable way to actually use it for a paid logo. Some example of logos that would be easier to recreate, like with an actual pen tool or just uh, the shape builder tool would be more solid logos that are black and white like this. So. Over here, I generated some birds. Th these would be really easy to recreate in Adobe Illustrator without doing the live trace. I did some wings here, some bunnies. The other thing you can do is actually combine like one of your results like this one with another logo. So if I wanted this to be more tribal, I might combine it with the Blackhawks logo, for example. And what you can do is actually you do slash imagine and then you put the URL to two different photos that you've pasted here in Discord. So I would, you know, like copy the link from this one, paste it in, do a space, colon, space, and then copy the link from this one, Blackhawks logo, paste that in. I like to get rid of this extra uh, sizing at the end. Really, it just needs to end with the dot PNG. Um, Put a comma, space, and then you can say like mascot logo. That got us this, which um, I'm not sure any of these fit what I would be looking for, but there are different options nonetheless. I did a similar thing up here and got this. So you can just keep regenerating the prompt to get more, to get more options. If you liked this video, you definitely need to check out this one here. And I thank you for coming in today. Be sure to subscribe if you found this useful.